Hello, this is Recipes with Ben, and today I'm going to be passivating some brewing equipment that I have on hand. It's a good practice to do this periodically or whenever you get a new piece of equipment. The basic process is first cleaning the stainless steel with some kind of oxidative cleaner, such as trisodium phosphate or Barkeeper's Friend or any other ones that are out there. And then you want to hit it with some kind of acid to finish it, which will then remove the layer on the outside, which then will allow air to react with it. So some sorts of acids you can use are things like star sand, because it contains a phosphoric acid, or citric acid, uh, or because it's food grade. And then lastly, you could also use something like nitric acid. I would say the first two are probably better, just because they're a little bit easier to get in terms of for home brewing. And just be warned that some of these types of cleaners can destroy the etching on the inside of any of your stainless steel. It's recommended for this kind of these acids is that you want to use, a, if you're using star sand, you want to use one ounce per gallon, which is a lot more than say typically when you sanitize your equipment, which is typically around one ounce per five gallons of water. And citric acid, they recommend about four to 10% by weight of citric acid into a water solution. So with all that said, let's get passivating. So let's start with what I have here on the table. I'm going to do both my brew kettle and my new stainless steel brew bucket that I bought. And for safety purposes, I'm going to wear some, some safety glasses and elbow length gloves. For the cleaning, I've chosen trisodium phosphate because I can get this commercially available at say a place like Home Depot. Again, not a sponsor. And then for that, I'm going to need to also need a scrub brush. And then finally, for the last step, I'm using star sand because that's what I have on hand. Because I don't want to show you my bathroom, I'll go off camera to fill it up with about two and a half gallons of water. And this should be about warm water, so I've turned it on the, the hottest setting of my you know, shower. And returning back into the frame, I'll put on my safety glasses and then I'll put on my rubber gloves. For the cleaning, I couldn't find an exact amount per gallon of trisodium phosphate that you want to use. So I used about half the box of TSP. And this is, a, I think, a one pound box. So that would be about a half a pound of TSP per this two and a half gallons. As I said, you can get TSP in several places, but I found mine for about four bucks at Home Depot. Then with this bristly brush that I bought, I'll scrub all the surfaces of my kettle. And for this reason, I needed long gloves so I could reach the bottom, but not have my arms get wet in the solution. I then scrubbed the sides, the bottom, and the dip tube in my brew kettle. And then after all of that and letting it sit for, you know, five to 10 minutes, periodically scrubbing it in that time, I then transfer it to this solution into my fermentation bucket that I have. And I'll repeat the same kind of process where I'm scrubbing with the scrub brush on all the sides, including the bottoms and any of the dip tubes that exist inside this fermenter. From there, off camera, I'll dump out the solution and you know rinse it out thoroughly about two times with hot water. So then I have about three gallons of room temperature water, and then I add to that three ounces of star sand. I then rubbed it all over the fermenter as best as possible and let that sit for 30 minutes to react with the surface. I didn't record all this, but about every five to 10 minutes, I came back to the fermenter, and then again with the brew kettle, I'll talk about that in a second, and just kind of rubbed it down to make sure it was still coating any pots, spots that hadn't really been in the solution. I then transfer this over from the fermenter to the brew kettle, do the same thing, let that sit for another 30 minutes. And finally, after pouring out all the solution, you want to let this sit and uh, react with air overnight. The idea here is that as you're passivating it, you restrict the, remove the first layer on the stainless steel, uh, and then it's, any of the metals that are on there are going to react with oxygen to form like an oxidative layer, which then protects your stainless steel. You want to let this air dry for at least 24 hours, if not longer, I'm gonna let mine sit for a couple days until I brew the next time. And then if you do brew a lot or fairly frequently, it's a good idea to do this at least once a year, if not more often. And that's it, that's passivating your stainless steel equipment. This will work with anything that's stainless steel. I use the TSP because it was recommended by SS Brewtech in their guide with, that came with the fermenter. And then I just use star sand because that's why I had on hand. Citric acid also good because it is food grade. Let me know what your process is down below so we can learn from each other. And if you, if you found any of this helpful, smash that like button. And if you're new to the channel, click the bell down below to subscribe. 
with all that said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.